This is Joe. And this is Nat. And you're listening to the Getting Better with Age podcast, the show that helps you navigate midlife challenges and turn them into opportunities to grow and evolve into a happier, healthier, and more empowered you. And remember, getting older doesn't mean that the best years have to be behind you. We believe, like a fine wine, you and your life can get better with age. And we're here to show you exactly how to do that. So grab a glass of vino, kick off your shoes, and join us in discovering how to make the next chapter of your life the best one yet. Hey everyone, it's Joe. And it's Nat. And welcome back to another episode of... Our Getting Better with Age podcast. So... We have a question for you, because if you haven't noticed yet, that's kind of how our podcasts kick off, how each episode kicks off, because I feel the only way to get the true answers in life is to ask better questions. So we're going to start with this. If you were to step out of your life, right, so you go up in the heavens and you're looking down on your life and you say, are you really happy with who you are? Now, if you're courageous enough to say no, there are some things that I really don't like. There are things that I really want to improve. There are things I want to get better at. There are things that I suck at. Like if you could be courageous enough to admit that, then you're our peeps and this podcast is for you. And if not, that's okay. <laughs> Just live in delusion, shut this off and go out and have, have a great day. <laughs> um, so today we're gonna to talk about how to tap into you how to connect to the person that you truly want to be. So now we're very transparent on this journey. So if I were to ask you if you are happy with who you really are and where you're at in your life, what would you say? I would have to say no. <laughs> but you got a great husband, you got great kids, you got a roof over your head. I don't get it. Why would you say no? Because I know there's still a lot in me that I want to share with the world. Well, maybe not the world, but maybe you guys. <laughs> anyway, like, you know, Wayne Dyer once said, he, um, I don't want to die with the music still in me. Right? That was Wayne Dyer? Yep. Yes, I'm sorry. And, and that's truly how I feel. I feel that there's so much more left for me to accomplish, achieve, experience, everything. So... And that's what I want to do. And I think a lot of us, once we hit midlife, that's when we start really thinking about it. It's like, have I done all there is to do? And I don't mean like your bucket list, which is part of it, but that's not the whole thing. It's really living the way you were truly meant, the way you were created to live, the way you were created to be. And and I think that's so important because... Those bucket lists, those things are cool, mm-hmm. right? You know, traveling, going on vacation, experiencing different things, hitting certain career or personal milestones, that's awesome. But those are all external things. Right. And those external things will make us feel good for a little while, but that's like, then we're on to the next. But I think what we're talking about is those things that internally bring us joy, bring us peace, bring us fulfillment, so that when we get to the end, and you know, I've shared this is my goal, When I get to the end of my goal, end of my life, and I make my transition, like I want to go with a smile on my face and a full and grateful heart. Mm -hmm. And I think we get to this point in midlife, and if you're listening, I hope you can relate to this, where we've done all the things we're supposed to do, right? We go to school, we get an education, we get married, we get have kids, we save some money, all those have nice vacations, nice lives, and then we get to the point where it's like, well, wait a minute, you know, and as you get older and you start losing your parents and, you know, friends, you know, some of us are at that stage where we've lost a couple of friends and people mm-hmm. who are close to us. And we start really looking at it going, what's it really about? Like, who am I? You know, that magical question, who am I really? And I think it's about connecting to who you truly want to be. Because I think go from this point, looking back, we were being somebody that we thought we were supposed to supposed be. Supposed to be, yep. Right? And now we go, but wait a minute. <laughs> I was being that person that I was supposed to be. I was doing all the right things, and yet there's still something missing. Yeah, there's a lot of joy. There's a lot of gratitude for some of those things. But there's still so much more. And, and I think this where we're at in this stage, if you can see it as that, it's truly a blessing. And it's not a midlife crisis. 
but it's really a midlife calling to say, okay, who am I really? Who do I want to be? Right. And it doesn't have to be this big, grandiose life purpose. You know, we've talked about this before. It could just be little things that bring out the best in you and to, and to help you really feel that you are living your best life. And, you know, just for example, just this week, um, the past couple days, I haven't been in a really good place. I had a tough time with things and Joe and I were talking and, you know, sometimes when you're talking and you have like this aha moment, this moment brought me back to when I was 10 years old and I'll never forget this moment lives in my conscious all the time, rent free. It was the day my grandfather died. I was 10 years old and I was sitting on my bedroom floor. My parents kept us home from school that day. And I was reading a book, and I'll never forget, it was Holly Hobby. It was a Holly Hobby book. Well, my sister had a Holly Hobby oven, I remember that. I did too. <laughs> anyway. Shows how old we are. People, some people go, Holly Hobby. Holly we, we tell that to our kids. Who knows Holly? You know, how many followers does she have on Instagram? I know. Maybe she'd have a lot. I don't know. Um, so anyway, so I was reading my Holly Hobby book and I started singing the words because I always like to sing. And listen, I'm not a singer in any sense of the word, but I always liked to sing. So I'm singing the words and, and my mother passed by my room and she goes, Grandpa just died. I can't believe you're singing. Just stop it. And I was like, I'm 10. So I'm like, I had no idea that it was a bad thing, but that created, it, it kind of changed the trajectory of my life in a sense, because it made me feel that if I'm doing something that really makes me happy, that it's wrong. Right. That, that's where you discover is I can't be who I really am. I have right. to be a version of who somebody else wants me to be. And I know a lot of you are listening to this. It may not be about singing. It may be about your grades, the way you look, the way you dress, the way you, what you, whatever it was for you, because we all have that. Even if you, I think you have real loving parents, somewhere along the lines, they'll do something that oh, will invalidate yeah. you, make you feel like you're not enough. And then that will, if you're not aware of that, you'll carry that forward with you. Uh, I remember I was at a conference one time. But I wasn't finished. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> he interrupted me. I wasn't finished with my story. That's okay. Anyway, so, and actually that wasn't even the first time that happened where my mother kind of did something negative after I was singing and I was happy. Anyway, so it kind of solidified this belief that it's if I'm doing something that makes me happy, it might not make someone else happy and it, I might be doing something wrong. So I had this aha moment and yesterday actually and I'm like you know I just love to sing and Joe when we're in the car and this music's on I always sing like it makes me happy but I don't do it as much as I would want to because of that old belief that was ingrained in my brain at 10 years old so you know what I did today what'd you do I created my sing-along playlist on Spotify. I have them up to like 32 songs. And they're all the songs that I love to sing. Um, Piano Man, Bohemian Rhapsody, Hotel California. I have some Judy Torres in there. I have some Pink in there. I, I sing a lot of Frank Sinatra. <laughs> the, the wheels on the bus go round and round. <laughs> Come on, the wheels on the bus go round and round. <laughs> but anyway, and, and I was so happy doing it. And as I was going through the songs, I was like singing pieces of it. And I was happy. Right. And, and I think that's... <laughs> That's what we're talking about. It's connecting to who you want to mm. be because we live in a world where it's so indoctrinated to be special. You have to look a certain way. You have to live a certain way. You have to pray a certain way. And it's all other people's versions of who they think we should be or telling us 
who to be huh? instead of, and again, very often our parents mean real well. Oh, yeah, I'm not blaming you. Right, her. they just do what they were taught. You know, the sins of the father are passed to the son, kind of. It's that they don't know any better, and that's what they learn from, from their parents. But when we see that it's about getting to this point of waking up, you know, I was reading something yesterday. Um, it's from Greg Braden. If you don't know Greg Braden, go Google him. He's pretty cool. But he's like a big metaphysical guy. Uh -huh. And he was talking about every human being is on a journey. And he's like, that journey is 18 inches. And it's getting out of your head and connecting to your heart and who you really are. And you really look at it like, wow. And he, 18 and, he said, inches. <laughs> and he said, some people, that journey will take months. Some people will take years. He's like, some people will take a lifetime and they don't even get it. And I think that's where we all have to walk our own individual path and ultimately become conscious to discover who we really are and who we want to be. And I think that's the beautiful part. You can kind of create the future because I think most people are just repeating their past. Right. And if you look back at their life today, it's really not that much different than it was uh, last year, five years ago. Yeah, some things will change. But for the most part, who they who they are mm -hmm. and how they've been living, unless they've done some kind of work, it's pretty much the same person. You know, we, we all know people who are negative and they've been negative <laughs> for, for a as long as, time as we know them right <laughs> the doom and gloom people and we, we all know people who are just really happy the opposite yeah they're optimistic they're full of hope and they're just great people and fun to be around so i think in this journey we all experience things that are very similar and i think that's a really cool thing because it helps us say hey you know what you can go make it happen yeah well you could tell your story now i wasn't finished with mine I, I forgot. About, I, I some brain you flashes. were at a conference? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I, and again, sometimes you experience things and it just sticks with you. I was at a, a conference about 15 years ago, and there was this gentleman in the audience, and it was all about kind of what we're talking about today, breaking through those limiting stories and beliefs and things that have impacted you and, and held you back from being your true self. And he shared this story. Now, this guy was in his 60s at the time. And he shared the story that in, he was in first grade and his class was getting ready for a holiday concert. Right? You can say holiday concert now. You, you can't say. Yeah, you you got to be careful. Okay. So he was getting ready for a holiday concert. And um, they were singing Santa Claus Comes to Town. And I guess the teacher heard him singing. And the teacher made a slight remark like, please don't ever become a professional singer. And it was something like that. Now, again, that might sound like a big thing. Like if Natalie said that to me, I'm like, yeah, I have no plans on it. But if you're a five-year-old kid, year six-year-old yeah. kid, and you're like hyped and singing and somebody comes along and throws water on you, it can devastate you. And that literally what happened to him. And he said from that moment on, he never sang. Oh, wow. And so what he did, and it, it brings emotions to me because just how we can take shit on from other people and how it can fuck us up. And so he wore a Santa Claus hat and, <laughs> and he sang Santa Claus comes to town in a room of a couple hundred people. And it literally brought everybody to tears mm. because he was this grown man who was carrying around this shit that some teacher put onto him with her shit because mm -hmm. she didn't resonate with the way he spoke, which was, you know, okay, that's fine. But that, impacted him in such an, a devastating, emotionally hurtful way that he clammed up for 60 years and didn't do something. And if you could see the smile on this guy's face <laughs> after he, he realized that, you know what? The teacher was an asshole. Mm -hmm. Singing brings me joy. I'm going to be me. And he just belted out Santa Claus comes to town. And so, you know, that's kind of why we're sharing this with you is that this journey is about becoming who you want to be. There's, you know, if you're at that midpoint like we are, there's a lot of time left on the clock. Mm -hmm. And yes, tomorrow may, may not be guaranteed, but we don't not know that it's not guaranteed. to anyone, no, no matter what right? age you so are. So it's let's go forward and let's make the most of the time that we have left, not only for ourselves, but I think for other people. Because I think when we're not being our true authentic self, we rob the world of our true divine essence. Mm. And I think that's, we were created 
to sing if that's your calling like look if, if you have you no desire to sing and and you hate singing then then don't go make a playlist of <laughs> you know of sing-alongs but whatever lights you up and and go do that and and don't listen to what the fuck anybody else says it's like what lights you up in your heart in your soul and and go do that right and it's like doing little things like that every day that bring you joy and that really show who you truly are, that's when um, you know you're living authentically and you're living the best version of you. Yeah, and I think that's really what it comes down to. Are you living, are you truly happy with who you are and how you're being and how you're living your life? And Because let's face it, we all put on a mask and put out the version that we want the world to see. When the truth is, when we are behind closed doors, there's stuff that we don't like, there's stuff that we're embarrassed about, there's stuff that we don't want to admit, because it's like there's something wrong with us. And that's one of the reasons we're doing this is because, hey, you know what? We're just like you. And we got stuff, and we're committed to making that back nine the best it can be. And if that means, you know, admitting flaws, you know, admitting that we get emotional, you know, it's one of the things that, you know, if there's any guys listening, it's, you know, there's this thing that, you know, to be a man, you can't show emotion. And, you know, I understand. I, I grew up, been a man my whole life. And it's just such bullshit. We, we, we're human beings. I think if something touches your heart, then you should be able to express your emotions. And I think that makes you more of who you are. And so if you're a man, I think it makes you more of a man. But if you hold that back because it's not cool, um, you're a wuss, yeah. you know, well, just think all that stuff, then you're not being your true authentic self. And to me, not being your true authentic self is the biggest crime in the world. Right, and just think about, you know, last week when, during the football game when DeMar Hamlin collapsed and nobody knew if he was alive or not. And you see these huge, big football linemen falling to their knees and right. just sobbing. Right. I'm like, that's real. That's real life. That's true. They were being, they're being their true selves because yeah. their friend, their teammate, they didn't know what was going to happen and right. they were just being true to themselves right. and that was so beautiful beautiful it really right. was right. and and i think we need to see that because a lot more you know you you want to talk about testosterone jacked up guys <laughs> <laughs> you're know, going to find ones that are more than on the football field yeah but like now they said you see these 300 350 guys I mean, who are just there and the, and their tears welling down their face. I, I cried. My yeah. my son was crying. Her girlfriend was crying. Like you, you couldn't help but right. feel that. Right. Well, that that's that inner connection that yeah. we all have, because it's like you know what, this guy has teammates. He has a family. Yeah. You know, all the things that there are. So all those people in the stadium, and you know, it's like in that moment, it's like sports and everything went out the window. Yeah. It's about. Just the love for this person right. and, and the yeah. care and the concern. And that's just, it was refreshing. Yeah. It really and, was. And, and I think we need to see more of that and use that in our journeys, mm. those of us who are parents, to teach our kids, you know, especially if you, if you have boys. You know what? It's okay to express emotions. You know, one quick story before we went, when I was five years old, my dad had a heart attack. And he almost passed. And I went to visit him in the hospital. And as soon as he saw me, he broke down. Mm. <laughs> now, my dad was my hero. And to see my hero break down and become vulnerable, it didn't scare me. But it made me see that it's okay to cry. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to sh show emotions. It didn't make him less of a man in my eyes. It made him more of a man. And I think that's what we really need to see is that let's just be real. Yeah. 
we've been given this gift called life. <laughs> yeah, shit's going to happen. Oh, yeah. You know, life's going to kick you down. It's going to bring you to your knees. It's going to make you go, what the fuck? But then there are so many moments of pure joy, and we have the power, the ability to create the life that we truly desire in our hearts. But it's us, up to us to go make it happen. So... I'm kind of drained after that one, wifey. So you might, you might want <laughs> See, to Joe cried in this one. Yeah. Natalie did. Right. And could, honestly, every time I told that story about when I was 10, I usually cry. But I've only ever told it to my husband. Anyway, um, so think about this. We always leave you with some homework. So today, what I want you to do is really sit and think about what is something that you can do today or tomorrow that will not only bring you true joy, but will show the how authentic you are, where you are really truly being you, the you that you want to be, the you that you were meant to be, the you that you love inside. Yeah, go do something that lights you up, irregardless of what other people are going to say, what they're going to think. Mm -hmm. And then after you do that, just notice how you feel. Yeah. Right? Because it's about that's tapping into your truth. It's tapping into your divine power. It's following your heart to do what lights you up. And when you see you do that, it's like, hey, that feels good. So maybe I can do that again and again. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sing. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to dance because I love to dance too. Even though my kids make fun of me, I don't care. I'm doing it. That's it. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm going to have to think of what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right, so great episode. Good job, wifey. Hey, listen, love and appreciate you. Love you guys. If you know someone who can really benefit from this, go share it with them. We, we need more love and light into the world. We, yeah. need, we need to be real and give each, each other permission to just be who the divine created us to be. So you're awesome. We'll see you next time. God bless. Bye, guys.